right. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to the latest webcast in Caring.com's Digital Marketing Academy. Our session today is focused on changing consumer behaviors in the COVID-19 era and how to adapt your senior living community's social media marketing to be most effective. I'm Denise Grob, a marketing director here at Caring.com, and I'm joined by guest presenter Kent Lewis of Anvil Media, who I'll introduce in more depth in just a moment. Before we dive into the presentation, though, I want to cover a few housekeeping items. This is a one-way webcast where only the presenters speak, but we do want you to ask questions. Uh, you can use the chat module or the Q&A module, and we'll have a Q&A at the end of the presentation. The number one question we get in every session, and we've already received via chat for this session, is will this be recorded? The answer is yes. Um, hopefully you're seeing a flashing red dot. We are recording this session, and we will have the slides available afterward and I will distribute them to all registrants tomorrow morning. We also host our webinars on our blog partners.caring.com. Now this is a free session uh, but the sponsor of today's webinar is caring.com so the price of admission is a brief commercial <laughs> for those of you who are getting to know us and as a refresher for our partners. Our organization was founded by caregivers for caregivers. Our flagship website, Caring.com, was created and launched in 2007 to equip family caregivers to make better decisions, save time and money, and feel less alone and less stressed in providing senior care to their loved ones. Today, millions of people come to our website to research and get referred to senior living communities and home care agencies. In fact, we have one of the most comprehensive senior living directories on the web and we're the number one source of senior care reviews online with more than 265,000 consumer reviews posted on our website right now and thousands added every month. In May 2018, we were acquired by Caring Holdings LLC, a group of investors with over 15 years of digital marketing expertise. That transaction enabled us to continue and expand our services to seniors and their families while remaining a crucial strategic partner for senior living communities nationwide. Our featured presenter today is Kent Lewis, president and founder of Anvil Media, a digital marketing agency where he oversees strategic direction of the company and is focused on sales and marketing. With digital marketing expertise dating back to 1996, Kent speaks internationally, writes for business publications like Smart Brief, and has been an adjunct professor at Portland State University since the year 2000. He's also been named a top 40 under 40, a marketer of the year, and a top 100 digital marketing influencer. Some of you may recognize Kent's insights from the Smash Senior Care Marketing Summit, where he's presented on marketing topics in multiple years. We are so excited to have him in the Digital Marketing Academy today. And here is what he's going to be covering. He'll start uh, with some background and behavioral trends. Then he's gonna take you through the 10 post-pandemic social media strategies you most need to be focused on. I'm going to give you some information about online reviews. We'll cover resources um, that will help you after the session, and then we'll do a Q&A. All right, so without further ado, let me help um, Kent get unmuted here and give him control of the presentation. There we go. All right, Kent. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, everybody. Uh, let's talk about uh, some of the uh, pandemic behavior trends to kick things off and how things have changed, how consumer behavior has been impacted by COVID and the pandemic. So for starters, oops, I hit that twice, my bad, it's sticky. Uh, for starters, there has been a, a, an impact on brand purchases. And while this is tangential to senior living, I, these are important components to consider as you reach out to caregivers and professionals in the space. Um, what consumers are looking for right now, originally, if you recall, there was a bit of a, a toilet paper shortage uh, a year back. 
Um, but availability has been top of mind, especially in um, the world of retail and e-commerce. Uh, but other more applicable trends for the senior living space would include this need to con for convenience. And we'll talk a little bit. Um, uh, Denise will share a few thoughts on how this has impacted senior living specifically. Um, as always, value is important, especially during times of uncertainty or economic um, uh, downturn or hardship. Although the economy seems strong, some people have been ex extremely adversely affected and value and cost becomes very important. For those less affected, uh, like the billionaires, uh, quality is important, organic nature, health, hygiene is obviously very important, especially in the senior uh, living space. Uh, but a sense of purpose is increasingly important. I'll see that, that a trend you'll see moving forward. So um, senior living organizations that talk regularly about their purpose and bring it back into their marketing will be far more successful. And there are a few other changes as well to consider uh, in behavior, and that is this, uh, uh, this necessary obsession with low touch. So again, not, uh, there's an indirect major impact or on, on senior care in terms of tours, but primarily this is around delivery of, of everyday consumables. Uh, so food, grocery, um, you know, are important. Um, you know, so when you look at how brands are delivering, it's important to understand how you can address this trend with low and no touch, which we will get to uh, shortly. And then there is how time is spent. And I think this, there are some applicable insights here to senior living space. Uh, for starters, uh, cooking. I am not a cook. I am one heck of a good dishwasher but people are spending a lot of time cooking, whether it's sourdough or muffins, or just some people even learning to cook as they're stuck at home. Uh, one thing that may imply to the senior living industry in terms of content for social would be more recipes or more videos of, of uh, cooking tips, if it's relevant to your audience, of course. Uh, DIY home improvement, not so much uh, for this industry, but just know that is uh, very hot right now. Um, exercise, we're fortunate to have one of our clients is in the, fit, the home fitness space, another is in, in, um, in retail, they're doing very good. Uh, we'll touch on this in a little bit, but live news and information, particularly video format and, and providing information through social media, people are spending way more time on social media. Um, whether it makes sense for you uh, going through SMS, text, or chat as a channel for communication, is uh, up for consideration, highly recommended. And again, more time on TV. Uh, print has actually done okay. Outdoor is starting to rebound. But again, these are the primary trends and how uh, consumers have changed how they spend their time and consume information. So when we think about um, age groups or different segments, you've got the affluent, you've got the uprooted, underemployed, financially secure but anxious, um, trying to make ends meet, and then the disconnected retirees who are, um, you know, they may be your end customer, but they're not necessarily who you're actively uh, marketing to for the most part, depending on your facilities and your services. Uh, but, you know, everybody is going online, and that goes without saying. The more affluent, the more likely you are to spend more time and, and change your behavior to online. It has uh, had a big impact on loyalty uh, particularly for the uprooted or underemployed, um, transparent, the need for hygiene tr and, and general transparency and communication also important, particularly for financially um, anxious, even if they're secure. And it moves on from there, you know, to return to the essentials on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, uh, just buying the essentials, looking at value, we've talked about that. And then just that home body, knowing that whether they're the influencer or the decision maker in that senior care scenario, that they are doing a lot of that decision-making from home, which provides an excellent uh, transition over to Denise to talk about what they've seen in senior living at caring.com and changes in behavior. Thank you so much, Kent, for covering um, those trends uh, across industries. And folks on the call know some of this information already. They were directly involved, but I'm gonna just summarize. Um, when COVID-19 hit, 
the need for senior living didn't just disappear or come to a halt with the onslaught of negative media coverage about nursing homes. Our phones continued to ring. People continued to come to our website seeking information about senior living. But there were some shifts um, that you mentioned that happened in other industries that we also saw in ours, including adjusting how prospective residents and their families toured the communities how families of current residents were able to visit with their loved ones and get information from the communities, and how well connected everyone is via technology now. Many of our larger partners were well equipped to provide virtual tours immediately or soon after the shutdowns um, last March. Those who were able to provide live staffed tours via technology, not just provide a link to a pre-recorded video or photos online, but actually take the prospect through the community via FaceTime or another app, they were best positioned to continue their marketing effectively and most successfully. Some of our partners were even equipped with model apartments or a tour area separate from their current residence to enable a senior or their family member to tour in person, uh, obviously following COVID safe protocols to keep the community's employees safe as well. Today, in March 2021, many senior living communities are hosting vaccination clinics and are able to return to other in-person tours and events. But the need for virtual tours remains because it's a very convenient service for distant relatives and any prospects who aren't yet comfortable touring multiple senior living communities. Your virtual tour can provide them enough information to narrow their search and focus where they do the in-person tours, right? So having a virtual tour um, was essential last year, but it continues to be a need for senior living communities. Online reviews is another focus area. It's been popular for a lot of years, but COVID-19 increased their importance. I'm gonna go into that more later, but. I want you to know that we got reviews that were positive about the communities. Many family members were complimenting how well the communities were keeping seniors safe during the pandemic. They appreciated the frequent helpful communications the communities were providing the families, particularly because they couldn't visit um, in person or had to do window visits or um, they had to just talk to their loved one on the phone or do video conferencing. Senior living operators have always had safety and cleanliness among their top priorities in managing professional senior living communities, but COVID-19 added more challenges, obviously, including being able to provide enough PPE for staff. We had to adjust dining services for residents. Um, communities needed to ensure that residents didn't become too isolated and maintained as much quality of life as possible under really challenging circumstances staff at communities had to do all of their regular work and more to ensure high quality services they were known for and i truly applaud those of you who rose to this challenge um, on the front line demonstrating excellence in our industry uh, at caring we did as much as possible to support you and support consumers including providing informative resources uh, to bring some calm and ease to the situation and help the help prospects find the community's best match to their needs. Um, and so all of the strategies that Kent's going to cover next apply to how you market your senior living community as well. So thank you for that opportunity, Kent. You can go ahead and take it from here. Great. Thank you. So uh, transitioning, we want to get into the meat of the presentation, which is uh, ostensibly six behavior trends. Well, this is a teaser before I get into the top 10 behavior trends. But there are six behavior trends uh, unique to senior living market, unique to senior living marketing that are worthy of note and uh, or that apply directly to uh, the senior care space. And so one thing that I uh, want to just reemphasize is that's really important in terms of leading through all this. And I would argue that uh, this these six trends that I've identified are, uh, you know, in some cases a year old. Uh, but I, but I, it's important to, to mention them because they're still important to master. So the first part is, is focusing on those fundamentals. Um, what are those core business movers? Uh, if you're into good to great, those hedgehog components of staying focused on what moves your organization forward and keeps your, your clients, your residents happy and functioning, your employees healthy. 
Uh, you know, knowing that, as we mentioned, the living and working at home is, is a really important factor, not just externally from consumer behavior and your potential decision makers, but your own employees and their families. And just being cognizant of that, um, they are typically working on uh, unique to your industry as well as other uh, high touch first responder industries. They have to work, uh, you know, on the, in the facility and not remotely, but others perhaps on the administrative side are working remotely in some cases. Uh, so therefore, remote communications becomes more important. And as we've touched on the, the need for those virtual experiences like the virtual tours, uh, a true vir virtual tour, uh, really. And, and that may, that lifespan for some of you may end by June. And for others, depending on your state, your city, and, and uh, how the vaccinations are rolling out. Uh, and, 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 but it, it, the virtual tours will probably be evergreen and a re uh, almost a standard moving forward. Um, E-commerce is not as relevant directly to your industry, but the, di the migration of, of information and communication is. Um, that low touch uh, and no touch is, again, you're not a curbside delivery of dropping patients off. We'll take it from here, although that could be a theory, is more about how you interact, how the guests are, uh, interact with their, with their loved ones in the facility, that safe distancing, all of that, and those, uh, those kind of physical scenarios that are worked out. Uh, but more than anything, you know, marketers have to re retain some flexibility and be attentive to the changes in the marketplace, which is particularly important. So the, 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 we're going to talk about some of these very specifically. And I think the, the, fir the first part to keep in mind is that it's essential for uh, the senior living industry to absolutely master digital experiences. So I'm going to be using uh, Atria as a common example, uh, which I was advised to do by Caring as, as one that's doing things well and has set a standard in many ways. I'm using Brookdale and others in other scenarios and some Caring content as well. So the idea is that uh, acknowledging that the, deci the decision makers and influencers are at home and working from home and they're researching, that it's important to get the messages out so the CEO, John Moore, has a video talking, and I would just, uh, one little bit of teeny bit of criticism is um, presenting with a mask on doesn't work very well. So I would recommend you can show that you're being safe um, in other ways other than trying to talk through a mask. If somebody is deaf or visually impaired and you don't have transcript, they can't understand anything that he, that he or somebody else in a mask is saying. The mask makes sense if there's two people in the same frame, but does, you know, within six feet, but it doesn't make as much sense for the individual. But otherwise, they've done a, a great job of getting their CEO out front, using hashtags, um, talking about the team and what they're doing. And, and it's also important, I think, to embrace video conferencing or webinar platforms like Zoom, the one we're using today, testing live streaming. I'm giving a presentation next Wednesday about event marketing specifically uh, for another organization where live streaming is a key component um, is it right for you and your organization? Well, you'd have to tune into that, but um, uh, we do have articles on our website about event marketing and live streaming uh, at ambomedia.com. Uh, archiving webinars, podcasts, and videocasts. So when you're creating video content or digital content, so audio, video, or a mix, it's the beauty is you can record it once, you can perform it once like this and record it, which we're doing here in this presentation, and then you can use it uh, later, you can archive it, whether it's gated and secure for a very small audience or it's absolutely publicly accessible through your YouTube channel or, uh, you know, if you're hosting a, a Stitcher or SoundCloud podcast uh, channel, that's all an option as well. Uh, and then you can, add, you know, you can take advantage of some of these platforms, particularly podcasting and streaming audio and look at advertising or sponsorship opportunities to get in front of your audience with strategic buys or guests uh, advertorial type of content. You can be seen as an expert providing that information. Uh, you know, it's interesting what um, Adria has done with their video library and they have uh, Kristen Bell, I believe, a uh, famous actress, and just kind of fell for one of the residents at one of their care centers and they had a whole uh, relationship and I believe it was on CBS Sunday morning. And so they did a good job of reminding people that uh, they're getting some, some great awareness. I'm, as a PR guy by trade, I value uh, that kind of um, exposure. So uh, next up is all about being proactive and timely 
as well as flexible. So, you know, it's great to a lot of folks like at Anvil, we built a COVID plan for um, people to come back to the office back in April and then realize that most of our team has not been back in the office um, since March. Uh, but a few of us are going in regularly. So we have a whole set of uh, processes and tools. Now you and, and senior living space have, it's mission critical to your business to have those plans built. They were built a year ago or more, and that's, that's great. But things change. Uh, the news and information being distributed, the quantity and quality of that information, and the vaccines, and what does that mean for employee health and safety. Uh, so all of that, not only having the plan, but communicating it out, not just to employees, but and to your residents, but also to um, the general public and core decision makers. All of this needs to be factored in, but I'm preaching to the choir here. Uh, when I wrote this article um, and, and made this, these recommendations, it was primarily for organizations that are not, with, uh, not involving primarily frontline workers as your industry does. So, and it was not so heavily impacted by COVID as your industry. So again, uh, behaviors change, be a thought leader, take a leadership role, but it, it's all about flexibility and being more dynamic and fluid in how you market and how you communicate, especially through social media. So that's one factor. And then the next would be to be authentic. So uh, authenticity seems very obvious, but I've been in just the digital marketing world alone for, for 25 years. And in that time, uh, when, when I transitioned from a, a career in public relations, I noticed that I was in the BS business, really, as a PR professional of spinning and curating, and transparency was not in vogue in the mid-90s. Uh, when I transitioned over to digital, uh, I, something called Wikipedia came up, and it's all about that platform was notorious for being painfully transparent almost to a fault, so brands couldn't hide anymore behind um, you know, I love the profession of PR, don't get me wrong, but the, the, I use the term PR flax with love, is that, uh, you know, you can't spin your way out of a situation. Um, some politicians have had more success than others, but in the, in the world of senior living, I think it's really important um, to understand that, uh, that authenticity is key. So you'll see Brookdale has done some really interesting, um, what I originally thought was just kind of campy, probably not all that authentic, oh, somebody in a shark outfit. But as I de delved down into their feed, it was consistent that, and it seemed therefore authentic, that they're all about engaging their residents. Now, I don't believe they're alone, but due to their size, I assume that was very difficult to do, and maybe it wasn't part of their corporate uh, values, but it, it seems to be the case. I think Atria is very similar, and many others are perhaps even more authentic in, in that. But I think right now, people, and we'll talk more about it, they want fun, they want empathy, they want connectivity. So being authentic is key to that. So staying true, in fact, I've written an article about how to create a marketing strategy around your purpose. So the content you create in social primarily should be absolutely aligned, if not inspired, by your core purpose, your mission, your vision, and your core values. And so um, be prepared, however, for feedback or blowback if it doesn't resonate with your core audience, you know, residents, caregivers, employees, I don't expect that to be the case. But for instance, Nike, a couple of years ago when they came out with their Just Do It campaign with Colin Kaepernick, uh, they got a ton of blowback. They had people burning their sneakers and their shirts. And what do they do? They doubled down on it. Um, now keep in mind, a lot of their core buyers are, are mi minority, um, you know, ethnically or in any other way. So they are actually being authentic by taking a stand on, on, on racism and, and so forth. Um, and what they did is they actually placed an ad, a print ad saying, if you're going to burn our stuff, here's the safest way to do it. So they doubled down and they basically fired their worst clients or customers. And I think that's a strong statement for the senior living space. But what I would say is there's nothing wrong with um, um, turning off people that don't align potential prospects, their families, if they don't align with your core values, they're probably not a good fit long term. And that it makes sense potentially to uh, look at, uh, at an alternative approach to that. So uh, this relates to authenticity. Hopefully, it's authentic to be human and empathetic in your, not just your marketing, but in your day to day. And it should be very easy to find the content for your social that emulates and reflects that. So sharing authentic stories about um, 
Residents is most common. Seeing it since COVID, it, what's more common is seeing it about employees. How are you as an organization protecting your employees so that they can take care of the residents? That's really important. So I'm seeing a really good job. Atria and Brookdale were doing a good job of uh, the, the two I spent most of my time on, of doing a great job in their social, telling stories featuring their employees and their residents and what they're specifically doing. You know, uh, here in, in Portland, Oregon, where I'm based, um, Columbia Sportswear's CEO cut his salary to $10,000, which he could, he's worth a couple billion, he could probably just cut it to zero, um, in order to rechannel some of his salary and compensation to make sure retail employees receive regular pay. Possibly a PR stunt, uh, but I see this, um, I see this being an example of how you can lead from the front as an organization, tell those stories on social. You know, it's culture and brand is what you see, what you do when nobody's looking, how you behave without the spotlight. But as a marketer, my job is to shine the spotlight on the best behaviors and ensure that that's, that behavior is happening even when the spotlight is off or redirected. So um, look at your, another way to be human or empathetic is creating or revising your pricing or your payment options. Uh, to be more accommodating to those that are um, hopefully in temporary hardship, uh, creating other programs around what you're doing for the community, uh, local nonprofits, organizations, or causes giving back. These are all ways that you can absolutely um, add that next level to your uh, programs through human uh, empathy, basically. So uh, the, the next component or trend to address or strategy is to be of service, to donate or volunteer. I just teased about that. So basically, if there is a way as an organization, as a senior living organization, you can provide financial health or safety support. Uh, you know, typically the facilities were in most need of PPE are rarely able to give back out to the public. Things might have changed. Supplies might be in, in excess. And maybe there are, are um, employees, families you can take care of. Uh, but again, typically the medical industry and senior care are getting the PPE rather than giving it out. Uh, but there's other things you can do. So maybe there's more time now uh, than there is money to be giving back to a complementary uh, organizations like, uh, you know, nationally there are a variety of Meals on Wheels type of programs. Um, to just that goodwill, top of mind awareness, it's authentic, it's still your audience or your ecosystem. Um, you can see you don't have to be a billionaire and contribute 100 million uh, like Warren Buffett or Bill Gates um, towards, you know, resolutions, um, you know, vaccines and so forth to make an impact. And hopefully it's more than just a PR stunt, that it's authentically something that's making a difference. Now, the other idea that's worth note is the idea itself. So sharing ideas and tips. Um, you know, you have access through your employees, your residents, and your peers in the industry, and a wealth of information that others don't have. And it may behoove you to share as much of that as you can that's not some, for some reason confidential. So uh, timely shareable content, making it digestible, ideally images and video, which do far better than text. Um, statistically based research or studies are helpful, uh, particularly in this time when uh, health is so important, is, is something to keep in mind. You can also become a filter and create value by, by filtering news and trends, other research, sharing it out. So sharing, you know, that generosity approach, sharing information others have created and create value by being a filter that saves your audience time and money. You can see Atri was sharing out some good visuals, common questions, Q&A about COVID and the vaccine. I think that's high value. The more visually interesting you can make it, the more likely it is to get shared or consumed. And that's important in the world of social media. Uh, the other is to potentially, if you have the resource, conduct your own research across your facilities, the families, caregivers, residents, and professionals. Um, that may be a big ask. It may be some going down a rat hole. Uh, but if you can create, you know, maybe it's things like confidence in, you know, the current uh, vaccine or you know, the current plans, um, that could be very interesting information because what we need now, in my estimation, is more confidence in the, in the good things we're doing. The more people that take the vaccine, the better. I think that's science, not so much an opinion. 
Um, and then you can license or partner to create really amazing content. So maybe you don't have a videographer on staff. Maybe you don't uh, have the time or the bandwidth or the equipment, but you have a partner that's complimentary. Maybe they're in the food space, uh, et cetera. Uh, you know, you can create some great content, whether it's, you know, cooking, health, wellness, uh, you know, what to do when you're post pan post vaccine with your life. I think that's all can be very helpful. But keep in mind, it's sharing facts uh, is important, but entertaining is also what consumers are asking for, according to research. They don't want just the information, they want some en entertainment. So education is key, it's important, it's helpful, but what sticks is something that's delivered uh, in an entertaining, often humorous fashion, right? So, uh, you know, Brookdale had the, uh, the woman with her, uh, one of the residents with their, um, with their therapy horse or, is that a pony or a mule? Um, you've got uh, caring reenacting the infamous uh, Lucille Ball skit, eating the chocolates. I love it. Um, that's actually could be a whole thread or you know a Thursday weekly thing to do, right? Uh, then you've got others, uh, you know, other types of messaging can be humor, can be jokes. I know when COVID first hit, safe distancing was a new concept, especially for Americans. Um, who haven't been hit uh, for a hundred years with something so harsh as the um, as COVID, and so McDonald's, Audi, and other brands changed their logos temporarily to show safe distancing as a theme. The circles, interlocking circles with Audi, were spread out, and McDonald's spread out their arches. So, taking a timely approach to providing information using humor, uh, you know, to remind people to get the message out about safety, about the vaccine, whatever it is, can be very helpful. So you don't have to create, you can curate, right? Um, you can leverage user-generated content from your uh, residents, uh, other professionals, employees to create this type of content that's entertaining, that's authentic, that's empathetic, as we've talked about. But just know, scientifically speaking, behavioral-wise, people are craving entertainment, not just uh, information or education. Now, what builds on that further is the concept of telling stories. So facts tell, stories sell. And although I'm not proposing that you're a, a giant sales organization, you do want to keep your beds filled, uh, you know, for optimal revenue and, and uh, employee retention and, and all of the good stuff. So you can see some examples of uh, Brookdale and Atria messaging that I, that I found. Um, I thought um, it was particularly interesting when, you know, it's one thing to highlight a residence, another that's actually writing, writing a novel. Um, during Black History Month, Atria was sharing sporadically uh, stories from the, the good old days of, of integration, which I thought was, was on point uh, and timely. And then just others, you know, showing residents and employees getting vaccinated, getting that Band-Aid on the arm, uh, we can do it. Uh, you know, that whole concept, there's another recreation concept, I think is a great idea. Nostalgia is big, not just with those that lived, it, lived through it, the octogenarians, but also their kids and their grandkids, and in some cases, great grandkids. You know, since Stranger Things came out a couple years ago, everybody's pawning and pining for the 80s, the mid 80s, something that most people that lived it didn't think much of. Um, but boy, you can't get enough of the neon and the, the Duran Duran and so forth. So um, telling stories within the context so that nostalgia hits two audiences, if not three or four. Um, stories and memories are powerful, right? And, you know, you can utilize your network to create these stories and make them more interesting. Make sure you get permission, of course, first, so you don't run into any trouble on the uh, copyrights or trademarks. Uh, this may be more difficult for senior living to do, but I highly recommend that if you can help solve a problem around health and safety, around COVID or the vaccine, especially a year ago when I first wrote this article and was speaking and preaching this, was you can adapt and thrive or adapt to thrive, right? Um, I noticed uh, there's a, a comment that uh, HIPAA compliance with uh, confidentiality, even with consent, can be a, a, uh, a challenge. And we'll get to the Q&A at the end. Um, I, I would agree with that. And I'm gonna prep Denise to, to share her thoughts because 
um, she's more versed in the, the restrictions of HIPAA. Our, our senior care uh, clients are not, uh, are not struggling with that, or maybe they should be overly concerned or more concerned, but um, that's certainly something we can talk about later. Um, you know, evolving your products, difficult to do, but there might be new, you can see a, a view here of what Caring's showing the, the, the medicine ball drum concept, but, but they're, you know, safe distance. There are ways to show that there are ways to, to keep seniors active, to keep them engaged. Mental, illness has been a, mental health and wellness has been a huge challenge through, care, uh, through the COVID crisis, and that's for all ages. With seniors, it's, it's you know, equally, if not more important. So um, sharing these stories of how, how uh, senior facilities have addressed some of these challenges to keep these residents engaged and their loved ones is important. Um, but you can see some other brands have done a great job of adapting. So um, Bauer that makes hockey equipment went to uh, face coverings, visors, shields. Um, Google is provo you know, using all their data to track the spread of COVID. Um, Dyson invented a new ventilator in 10 days and man turned around and manufactured them quickly. <clears throat> it's that kind of quick thinking. Uh, if you can get on, on that train or have the opportunity to, um, very powerful opportunity. Uh, and then again, remaining flexible. Okay, so um, obviously you want to manage your costs um, as, a, as a facility, also manage your marketing costs. Um, it's not an economic downturn per se. In fact, um, many industries are thriving. The stock market is strangely performing. Uh, much to my surprise, thankfully I didn't sell off all my all my stock. Uh, but you still want to manage your costs, conserve cash. But for as a marketer, I recommend in times of uncertainty, and especially when your competitors are conserving cash, um, to potentially consider if you have the resources to double down on marketing, because you can gain market share at a fraction of the cost uh, during a uh, times of uncertainty or economic hardship or downturn. So. Ramping up is a good idea, but learn from 2000 and 2008, as I have. Anvil's um, uh, weathered quite a few economic uh, hardships and challenges over the years, and we've done that by being, ad adapting and doubling down and leaning in when others lean back. Um, setting goals is really important, short, middle, and long-term goals as you're doing your marketing, and of course, measuring what matters. So, uh, you know, measuring the metrics, uh, selecting metrics or key, key performance indicators, we call them KPIs, um, matter most. So is it uh, existing revenue, new revenue? Uh, is it, um, you know, duration? You're in a unique business unlike mine where um, age isn't a factor. It is in your business. So uh, making sure that occupancy rates and, um, you know, are obviously tied in with uh, marketing, keeping those numbers up. So uh, in, in conclusion, We've got uh, 10 primary communication strategies that we're recommending you address today in this webinar. Uh, manage, mastering the digital experiences, uh, utilizing webinars, live streaming, video, audio, like podcasting, being proactive and timely and flexible. You know, your planning should be able to move and change with, uh, with the situation. Uh, you know, the, there's a lot of uncertainty on the timing for, um, you know, vaccines. I'm not sure if I'm getting mine. April 1st, May 1st, sooner or later, for instance. And so the more information I can get, the more helpful. Um, authenticity is the new standard. Empathy is a new and critical component in messaging. And uh, if you can, be of, be of service, donate, give back, tell those stories. Um, when you're sharing information on social, share those ideas, share those tips. But if you can add in and inject entertainment, if you can tell them as stories or narrative beyond education or facts, it will be stickier and more shareable. And then uh, if you can evolve and, 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 and invent to problem solve, something that you might uh, share out with your community or even your competitors. Uh, but above all, remain flexible. Flexibility is absolutely key. You thought you had to be flexible before the pandemic. Uh, you know, we're all trying to be flexible in our day. And so, with that, we'll uh, just we're going to shift gears and, and talk briefly about online reviews, and then um, I will come back in and we'll do some Q and A. Great, thank you so much, Kent. Uh, really appreciate that. We got a lot of questions about online reviews um, in the registration process, and we know that online reviews are a key social media strategy for senior living communities. So I just wanted to cover uh, what we've seen with online reviews in the COVID nineteen area era. 
Um, I've been a professional focused on online reviews for over 12 years. I've seen how important they can be for whether uh, parents researching schools or boomers and seniors researching senior living communities. Uh, in my personal life, I use online reviews to research and select a wide range of products and services, and I'm sure you do too. But COVID-19 created some unique challenges for managing an online reviews program because businesses weren't operating normally. Consumers were reacting to media coverage rather than sharing firsthand experiences. And virtual research about products and services became mandated due to shelter in place orders. Uh, Power Reviews processes millions of transaction based reviews, and they found that consumers were sorting, filtering, and reading online reviews at double the normal rates in March 2020. We've seen similar trends on caring. We, we've watched users navigate our site um, through some third party optimization um, apps and we see they're spending a lot of time reading the reviews on each of the community's pages. Uh, we see them click the listings that have reviews, skip those that don't. So reviews remains important, but with everyone shifting online during COVID became even more important. Uh, in fact, there was so much activity that some of the major review sites weren't well positioned for this change in the online behavior and they temporarily shut down the ability for consumers to submit reviews and for businesses to respond to reviews. That didn't happen to caring. We had no disruption to our reviews program. We have senior living experts read every review, every review before it's published. We're very well versed in the variety of senior living services we know about and we consider HIPAA and processing reviews. And we have the necessary expertise and review guidelines to ensure quality fair reviews got published during this time. And we saw that even though most in-person tours and in-family visits were halted or dramatically reduced, we still saw slight increases in the volume of online reviews that we received. So families who are receiving excellent communication from the communities or who were relieved and pleased with the care of their senior loved ones, they took the time to go online and share positive reviews. Uh, however, um, those of you in the skilled nursing sector, you know that nursing homes were among some of the hardest hit by the pandemic with the highest volume of cases and a lot of the negative media coverage was focused on nursing homes. And I need to say this, this is really important. Most nursing home reviews are positive. If you look at the aggregate across all years, all reviews, most are positive. But with COVID-19, we did see a 22% increase in negative ratings for nursing homes and a 16% decrease in positive ratings in the period looking at mid-March 2020 through the end of the year compared to that same time period for the previous year. It will be interesting to see if the pendulum swings back or otherwise improves as services return to more normalcy in the coming months and year. Now, as we've discussed in this webinar, and I think I've mentioned it myself multiple times, it's so critical for your communities to have online consumer reviews in your digital marketing strategy. At Caring, every listing has a review submission form that your community can share with its happy customers. Some of you are partnered with us, and those of you who are can take advantage of our reviews by phone service, which includes the industry's first review call in line. We launched it in January, and we have highly trained review collection agents interviewing those consumers to collect quality reviews. Now, one reason that consumers like our program so much and that reviews on our website frequently appear in search engine results is because 100% of the reviews content on caring is public facing. We don't require someone to sign in or have a membership or give their contact information to read the reviews on our site. And we have US based customer service staff available via email or phone to answer any questions or address needs, whether from the consumer reviewers or the businesses being reviewed. Let me just move this forward here. So given how much time consumers are spending online, as uh, Kent covered and I've covered, um, and they're reading online reviews, there's no doubt about this, it's increasingly important that your communities pay close attention to your review profile and respond to reviews with best practices. 
So you, your team does need to understand HIPAA with the federal healthcare privacy law and keep your review responses compliant. We've done an entire webinar on this topic, given its importance, and it's available in our archive if you missed it. I can share those links afterward. We continue to cover it in nearly all of our reviews webinars as a consideration point. And uh, we help our community partners monitor their reputation. And we, there are several means for responding to reviews on our site, including we have integrations with some of the industry's top reputation monitoring firms. Um, but any business, whether you're partner with us or not, can respond to the reviews at Caring. Just email reviews at caring.com if you need help with that. Now, um, we, as I mentioned at the beginning, we are so uh, thankful that Kent was able to share his insights with you today. And we know that there was just so much to cover. Um, social media marketing is huge. That we could have webinars on each platform and we could have multiple webinars on Facebook alone. We just couldn't cover everything today. Um, and even the strategies, there's a lot more content available on each of those strategies. Kent put together this list of suggested resources. I will be providing it to you afterward. Um, and then we also have a ways that you can reach Anvil Media. We encourage you to follow them in social. And as a special gift for attendees, Kent is offering a free custom assessment of your community's current online presence. You just need to email him to take advantage of that offer. Okay, and I will be circulating all of this information afterward. And yes, the session is being recorded and we will provide um, the slides to you as well. So um, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into some questions here. Um, there was a question, you can, you can enter your question uh, in the Q&A module or the chat module, we'll take them either direction. Um, and one thing, oh, sorry about that. Somehow we are, there we go. Um, okay, so one question we got early on, um, obviously we got asked about the session itself being available. The answer is yes for that. Um, we also got asked about uh, a, a platform, uh-oh, sorry about that. We got a little bit of mouse work here. Um, we got asked about Instagram for skilled nursing. Um, Kent, do you want to talk about Instagram as a platform just real briefly as whether or not it has relevancy for senior living communities targeting boomers and seniors? Oh, looks like you're on mute maybe. Let me get you off mute. Oops. There we go. There we go. Thank you. I could not unmute myself. You are the, the grand controller of all things. Um, so. Uh, the question was about skilled nursing facilities using Instagram, correct? That's correct, yes. Yes. So now skilled nursing is a little trickier, right, with the, it's, there's a lot more um, gravitas in that space in terms of, and, and there may be, uh, HIPAA may, may be rearing its head much more than in the standard senior living scenario. Uh, so I would say as a marketer, my, my default is to, you create an Instagram profile, as well as the big, uh, the other five of the big six, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, um, and even Pinterest. And th there's a reason for that, regardless of the facility is, um, especially if it's a single uh, property, is because there is a need to curate your brand online. So if, if I do a search for like one of our clients is Terwilliger Plaza here in, in Portland, um, it's actually four or five buildings over a couple square blocks. Um, I want to make sure that their, their website comes up number one. SEO is what I've been doing for 20 something years and that we buy ads for the right keywords, right? That's mostly what we do these days on, on search and social, but that the rest of the search results are their social profiles, ideally positive coverage, and then reviews from folks like um, caring.com. So it, um, social profiles help curate the search results from an SEO standpoint. The other reason to be on, on Instagram is it's the broadest audience. Facebook is for seniors anymore. That's what, uh, what my kids will tell me. Uh, Instagram is for everybody. You know, it has the, uh, one of the broadest demographics. So that's a good reason. If you're going to pick a platform as a single platform, Instagram is ideal for that. And again, you can keep it safe. You, can, you don't have to show, to address the HIPAA compliance, you don't have to show your residence, especially if you have, for some reason, feel that there's a compliance issue. I would watch the caring webinar, as was suggested, because I'm not 
the expert in that, the work we've done with senior care facilities, Escaton and others, that wasn't an issue. And I think it's because we're not sharing full names or medical conditions or anything in the background that will be giving too much information away about this person um, or their, their medical history. Uh, but that is my, my limited knowledge or experience. So uh, with that, there's plenty of pictures you can take about on the, uh, with the facilities, stories you can tell, you can be a curator of other content. So I don't see a reason not to. And let me just parlay into another comment that was made in the Q&A. Um, I did use, um, my advice is started a year ago, it's still relevant because I see a lot in the senior care, senior living space, I see a lot of my advice is not being taken particularly well. But to a point that was given earlier is, I used examples from two big players. And the reason I did that was not to frustrate those of you on the call with smaller facilities or fewer locations. It's because they're doing it well. Um, it doesn't mean that you can't do it well. I've been curating my own social media presence uh, originally for a cost of $6 a month on Hootsuite. Um, and that involves me personally posting hourly on LinkedIn and Twitter, the two primary platforms of which LinkedIn is more important for me to reach out to folks like you. And that cost me maybe uh, 15 minutes a day total um, or less. And I have a massive presence bigger than almost any other executive in my industry. And so you can do that too uh, with minimal cost. Hootsuite's a lot more expensive now. There are others, Sprout Social, Buffer, and others that you can use to have a presence across multiple platforms very affordably. Um, so you don't have to be big to have a big, you know, have a meaningful presence in social but I tend to look at the top players to, to pull the best ideas because they've spent the most time on that uh, effort and you can emulate and then make it your own. Um, and also I didn't have the time or the ability to look at every small or regional player um, or even most attendees on this call and I apologize. But if you reach out to me afterwards, you saw my contact info, happy to have that chat one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Thanks, Ken. And I just would like to add on that is uh, I agree that the smaller communities are still an opportunity for them to leverage the strategies you shared um, to succeed in social media. Um, and I can give an example. Um, I started at Caring about 10 years ago, uh, and I was tasked with growing the Facebook following um, for Caring. We had less than a thousand at that time uh, followers connected to our page and I had no budget, <laughs> just to be perfectly frank and transparent. Um, but through sharing of content, both that we created as well as that I curated from the industry that I thought would be relevant to the audience and following the strategies that Kent covered, we were able to grow to over 50,000 followers. So it can be done with the smaller communities or, or if you have a one person team and no budget, it can be done. You just have to be really creative and really hone in on the strategies um, that can outline that will circulate afterwards. So thank you uh, for that question. Uh, the, another question we got was uh, one of the strategies and examples you showed was photos. Do you have a recommendation for um, photo apps that uh, folks can use to have social media on or have good photos on their social media? Yes, uh, Denise, I just answered that question in Q&A. The, the best tool that we use and recommend for clients that want to size images, video, and other assets across all the social platforms is Canva, C-A-N-V-A. You can open up the uh, Q&A and, and check that out, um, which is different than managing and scheduling posts across platforms. That's just to format the, the imagery and the video uh, files effectively. Uh, but for managing the actual posts, I schedule posts ahead of time, and then I shorten the URLs using the Hootsuite tool, and then I can track click-throughs and measurement. I can tie it in with my Google Analytics, et cetera. It's a robust platform that honestly hasn't evolved all that much uh, in the last 10 years. It was pretty good at the out of the gate, and it's still reliable. Hootsuite is, or Sprout Social is very similar. So managing your social is different than sizing your imagery perfectly, but Canva, plus a social platform management is, is ideal uh, for scale. Uh, but if you have more horsepower and people, then I would at least get Canva to format, format all the imagery, mastheads, post image sizes and widths to be compliant so they look good and then manually post them. Uh, that's also a, a fine way to go. Great, thank you so much. Um, all right, we got a couple more questions here. 
Um, and one of the questions we got, I would like to take the opportunity to answer is about online reviews and it comes up a lot from communities. They understand that they're important. They understand they need to get them, but they don't quite know the best way to ask. So um, caring, we have a whole webinar on how to get reviews. We cover strategies in there, but a simple way. And one thing, a, a, a repeat advice I give communities regularly is when somebody compliments your services, sees the opportunity to ask if they'd be willing to share that in an online review to help other families or seniors just like them find your high quality services. Now, you'll notice I didn't say, hey, will you do me a favor and post a review about us online? You're asking the consumer to help other people like them rather than do a favor for the business. The reason I'm making that suggestion is we've studied, we, we even did A-B testing on which was most effective for driving the most reviews and helping others like them won in multiple studies where we, we tested this. So we encourage the communities to ask um, to help others like them, right? So if you're talking to a senior resident, would you be willing to share that positive feedback online as an online review to help other seniors just like you? Okay, so that is one suggestion we have for that. Um, I saw there was another question posted in the Q&A module. The question was, um, does the content of a post change if you are posting on Facebook versus LinkedIn? And Ken, if you wouldn't mind answering that yes. verbally for the yeah. Facebook recording. Yeah, sorry, I didn't realize that uh, you all can't see that Q&A. And so um, basically, each platform has a different audience. Uh, Facebook is, is uh, mainly skewed senior. So it's, there, there are certainly loved ones, family, friends, caregivers, um, but also seniors on Facebook in a big way. And with the targeting, it's very easy to differentiate those audiences and target them appropriately with advertising. Um, LinkedIn is primarily, um, however, much more a B2B audience. So it is the professionals, the industry caregivers, or the folks that would be providing referrals. They can be targeted by, with ads by uh, job title, employer, location, tenure. All of that makes LinkedIn a very um, powerful B2B uh, platform for advertising. On the content side, that you can have a lot more overlap, 80% overlap where um, so for average business, I say, for a senior facility, I might say, um, you know, Facebook is great for reaching out to the overall audience with a focus on the caregivers and family um, of loved ones and as well as potential clientele. And then LinkedIn is great for recruiting talent, staff, and um, partnerships for growing on the sales side of things. And then, you know, somewhere in between are these other platforms, Instagram, um, Pinterest, I mentioned, which many of you are not, not as active on, is the second largest image search engine. People are looking for ideas and insights around anything from COVID to senior care, could be cooking, who knows, um, and, or health and safety. So um, creating compelling images, photography, and so forth, and putting them on, on Pinterest can be a, a very large audience. We're talking hundreds of thousands of views per month. Uh, and then Google, 20% of Google's 94% market share is Google image search. So it's a great way for people to find you is through compelling imagery. So don't forget that because um, that's often the, the stepchild of the big six platforms. Great. Thank you so much. And we're getting lots of questions um, about various platforms as well as um, online reviews. We only have a couple more minutes. Um, just want to answer, uh, let people know that if we didn't get to your question in the live Q&A now, we will follow up with you afterward. Um, and yes, Caring does provide a, a lengthy online form. They can, uh, it does not cut them off with a brief review, but we have found that the longer, higher quality reviews come from the reviews by phone service um, because we are interviewing Reviewing those individuals and collecting a lot of content on the phone. So that's another way to get lengthy reviews. Um, SEO is a whole, <laughs> a whole focus area. Great question about how social and, and SEO are coordinated um, and help the community. Um, in fact, we've even had Kent do a social media, uh, SEO um, session for our Digital Marketing Academy that we can share with you afterward. Um, so definitely thanks for that question. We'll follow up with you. Um, and then um, 
uh, let's see, was there, oh, I, I also wanted to add on the HIPAA. There was a question about images in HIPAA and Kent gave some great um, direction, but I would just also add that um, your community should definitely learn about the requirements of HIPAA. Make sure um, that you're not um, showing people who haven't opted in to have information shared in writing um, so not just told you it's okay to post their photo but you have consent and they are not a memory care resident um, so just you know there's there's a lot of things to consider there so you should definitely research uh, the requirements of HIPAA before you start posting um, resident photos um, so you have that background uh, now, Denise, Denise yeah. can I mention two things one is somebody had pointed out in the in the chat about uh, Facebook still has a large audience, 25 to 34. That's great. I didn't feel it was very relevant to this audience because that's not typically the decision makers. Um, it's typically 34 plus that are looking at, you know, like my age, I'm almost 50. I'm about to be the core target audience and I have been in the past. My dad had a mild stroke, um, but I don't see very many 25 to 34 year olds making decisions in the senior living space. Um, so that's why I didn't bring it up. Doesn't mean it's not true. And same thing with another point I'll make is, even though uh, uh, Nike and even Adidas, their core audience is, is majority white, it's still a massive audience of minority compared to other brands. So just to clarify that. Yes. Uh, and, and then one, uh, two more points that I, um, one is um, SEO is, is essential in being credible, both locally and, and just in general search without the local modifier like senior living, Portland. Um, it's a foundational element. It does not correlate highly with Facebook. Facebook and the other platforms, you can do effective SEO within those platforms to get your feeds, your updates to rank, um, but they don't really impact Google in particular, other than just making sure that you optimize your profile so it ranks for your branded search. Um, they're really two you know, separate things, but somebody had asked, so I wanted to clarify that. Yeah, and then I also, um, we got a question about employees of the senior living community inputting reviews their, uh, themselves based on surveys they've conducted. On Caring's platform, that's outside guidelines. We don't want that content as a review on our site. We have a direct relationship with the consumer. We definitely survey the consumer and ask them questions to get a review. Um, we appreciate that you survey your customers, but please do not input that content as a review on your caring listing. Okay, so um, unfortunately we, we have out of time, but I did want to summarize the key points here. Um, and that is that Kent covered convenience is a huge driving factor um, today in the sales process. It became even more important during COVID and remains an issue going forward. Health and safety are paramount in your marketing messages. Virtual interactions will become a long-term component of sales and marketing. And as Ken illustrated um, and communicated, facts tell, but your empathetic storytelling is really what's gonna sell. All right, um, we appreciate that you took time out of your day to do this. Um, Hello, hey Kent. Uh, uh, we have somebody that's on. Can you hear me, Kent? Oh. Ooh, there we go. Um, all right. So uh, we really appreciate everyone here today. Um, thank you for attending. You're going to be prompted to give a survey. We uh, welcome your suggestions. Want to thank Kent for his presentation today. Here's how you can reach us afterward and look for the email uh, in which we will provide all of the materials that we did uh, today. Thank you very much. Have a great rest of your day.